Today, I'm announcing that I'm leaving the Republican Party and will continue to serve the people of Arkansas as an independent with no party affiliation. I'm still a conservative, but I'm one whose values about decency, civility, and compassion I just don't see in my party anymore. I haven't changed. My party has. Arkansas State Senator Jim Hendren is one of the latest Republicans to say the party no longer represents him or his values, and so he's leaving. The lifelong conservative and military veteran is now an independent. He served in the Arkansas legislature for years, including in the state house from 1995 to 2001, before being elected to the state Senate in 2013, where he served as president pro tem. He also comes from a Republican political family. His father served in the state legislature. The governor of the state, Asa Hutchinson, is his uncle. So suffice it to say, the decision to leave the GOP didn't come lightly. And while he says the move cuts deeper than any single person, he did reference former President Trump in his announcement, even if not by name. Over the course of the 2016 campaign season alone, I heard people demonized as rapists and murderers. I watched the encouragement of the worst voices of racism, nationalism, and violence. And I watched my service and the service of my fellow soldiers dishonored. And then for months, I watched as members of my own party and our former president tried to overturn the results of a fair and free election, the very hallmark of our democracy, with lies, with false statements, conspiracy theories, and attempts to subvert the Constitution. This led to the violent events of January 6th when we all watched violence in the halls of our nation's capital and couldn't believe our eyes. For me, that day was the final straw. Now, Hendren is trying to create a home for others in his state who don't feel connected to any political party. He's the founder of the group Common Ground Arkansas. It aims to bring together moderate voices, quote unquote, who will be willing to work together and combat the forces that he says are pushing both parties to the extremes. Uh, Hendren, is the far f Hendren is far from the first person to flee the GOP, especially in the wake of January 6th. A New York Times analysis of voting records found that nearly 140,000 Republicans quit the party in 25 states from the available data. And that was just in January. But even so, the former president's continued grip on the party cannot be denied. Just look at the Quinnipiac poll from three weeks ago. A full three quarters of Republicans said they want Trump to play a prominent role in the GOP. It's no wonder the party is trying to fundraise by linking itself to the former president, setting up a clash with Trump over the use of his name. An attorney for the Republican National Committee is defending the group, saying it has every right to refer to public figures. Trump's response? No more money for rhinos meaning Republicans in name only. So the big question for Republicans is one we've been asking on this show since the insurrection. How much longer does Trump remain the driving force for the party, especially as more Jim Hendrens decide they're done? Joining me now is the man himself, Arkansas State Senator Jim Hendren. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the show tonight. You say the January 6th Capitol attack was the final straw for you, but you also call out things that he said in 2016 that you found antithetical to your values. So why leave now and not earlier? Well, it was a process, and like any process, it took time. I mean, I had been a Republican my entire life for 30 years and voted for Ronald Reagan as a president. And so a four-year deviation from what I considered to be the fundamental principles of our Republican Party, I hoped, was a temporary aberration and the party would return to its roots. So, yeah, I, I, and believe me, I spoke throughout my four, the last four years about my disagreements, although I was somewhat constrained as the president of the Senate and as, and as for a while a member of the military before I retired. There were some limitations on what I could say. But again, and then what I said in my speech was the final straw was when I saw uh, somebody from my hometown sitting in Nancy Pelosi's office with his feet on the desk as a military man who's spent 25 years defending our country, that goes down pretty hard. Uh, when I saw our leaders inciting insurrection and leading stop the steel rallies on my state capitol, that was it. So there, it was a culmination, yeah. but certainly I had hoped that this was a relationship that could be restored. But uh, instead of after the election, that restoration process beginning, it took a turn for what I consider to be an irreconcilable difference. 
Those were shocking scenes in the Capitol, no doubt, and shocking rhetoric from Trump and co in the wake of the election. But when you say final straw, a lot of us who've been covering Trump for years, including a lot of your fellow conservatives who came out as never Trumpers years ago, they would say kids in cages, uh, Trump praising neo-Nazis at Charlottesville as very fine people, uh, Trump telling Ilhan Omar and AOC to go back to their countries. I mean, the list is so long, we'd be here all night if I went through all of the potential final straws. None of those made you think, you know what, this, I can't be part of this anymore. Well, you're going to find that Democrats have disagreements with President Biden over the next four years, but they probably will not leave the party over it. There are going to be disagreements in parties. There's going to be disagreements in temperaments, and we can speak out of the, about those things. But everybody has to make their own personal assessment decision about when does it get to the point when I can no longer associate with that organization. I have respect for many who have stayed in the yeah. party and are continuing to try to right the ship uh, because the fact is that nobody I'm, wants to see the complete yeah. dissolution of that. But to say that every time there's a disagreement, did, and believe me, I did speak out about disagreements that I'm going to leave the party, <laughs> won't work for either side. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I guess most people would define disagreements as, you know, you dropped a minimum wage from the bill that we wanted in, not you praise Nazis. People would say that goes beyond disagreements. What happened under Trump was beyond the disagreements of previous political parties having rows. Just out of interest, you mentioned you voted for Ronald Reagan. Did you vote for Donald Trump in 2020? I did, and it was a very difficult decision. I would, I've told people it was somewhat of a selfish choice. And uh, the fact is, again, I am a Republican and I believe in conservative government. I believe in na strong national defense. I believe in uh, some a, a federal judiciary that is not an activist judiciary. Uh, but let me tell you, like a lot of people, we did not feel like we had a good choice. And that's part of the reason for Common Ground Arkansas, because in Arkansas, we find the same thing at the state level. We see choices where we have a far right extremist on the Republican side versus a Democratic candidate who does not represent the values at all. And the people in the middle, like my four adult children, feel like there is no home for them anymore. And I, again, to say that we have to uh, continue to choose between extremes is something that is just unacceptable to me moving forward. I mean, some of your fellow Republicans, like Larry Hogan, governor of Maryland, said, look, I'm not going to vote for either. But he couldn't bring himself to vote for Trump. Uh, I just find it fascinating that you say you disagree with him, but you still did vote for him. And it was only the insurrection uh, that led you leaving the party. Let's talk Arkansas politics and the GOP <laughs> wait, wait, way wait, you wait, are, wait, as wait. you mentioned. It wasn't... Uh, uh, to say only well, an insurrection is, is kind of hard for me to accept. I mean, we haven't had an insurrection in 200 well, I'm putting, years. Well, I'm putting that... Agreed. And we haven't had a Republican president who openly praised Nazis in 200 years either. I mean, I'm just saying there were lots of moments that people went, wow, that's the last straw. As I mentioned, Larry Hogan said he couldn't vote for Trump in November. You're saying you could. That's the only distinction I was making. But let me just ask you about Arkansas politics. Uh, Democrats used to get elected in Arkansas. Senator Mark Pryor, uh, before he lost to Tom Cotton, for example. Bill Clinton was governor, famously. Now you have a situation where GOP Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin was going to run for governor until Sarah Huckabee Sanders jumped in with Trump's endorsement. Now Griffin's running for AG, also with Trump's endorsement. In 2016, he said, I'm very suspicious of Trump's views because a lot of his views are completely off what a conservative would believe. I think Donald Trump is first and foremost a showman. What happened to your party? Why did it become this cult of personality where even people who once criticized Trump just fell in line? Well, that's a good question. And that's a question that had a big impact in me making a decision to leave the party because I don't disagree with the fact that the Republican Party has become more of an alliance to one individual than it has, has a party of principles. That was my, uh, again, uh, fundamental problem with after the election, we abandoned some of our most core principles, which are our oath to the Constitution. When we see members saying we're going to not certify an election, uh, we've departed from policy. We've departed from disagreements, as you said, about minimum wage to an entirely different land that I was not willing to be a part of. So, yeah, again, that's I, I think you're making the point. And we see it here in Arkansas. That's part of the reason that I chose not to stay in the Republican Party is because when I saw polls in Arkansas saying that 65 to 70 percent of people in this state want Trump to be the 2024 nominee, uh, I, I just don't think that's a fight that I'm willing to continue to engage in. I think I can do more from outside the party as an independent. 
again, providing a home for people who used to be Republicans or used to be, as you said, Mark Pryor or Bill Clinton or uh, Mike Beebe Democrats and have no home right now. Let me ask you this. Uh, your uncle is the governor, Asa Hutchinson. He just uh, passed a bill, signed a bill, uh, which is pretty extreme on the issue of abortion, um, been heavily criticized. He himself accepts it. So extreme, it's probably, not un it's probably not constitutional. And he says it's really just a test case to throw into the Supreme Court. Many would argue it's cynical moves like that. It's leaning into the culture wars in that way is what produced an angry, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, irritated, frustrated Republican base. It's what created Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a symptom of your party's extremism, not the cause of it. Well, I would not say of my party as a whole. And this, again, you're making the point for the movement that I'm trying to start, which is Common Ground Arkansas, because you're right. The pressure in a Republican party right now is 100% from the right from uh, groups that are far to the right who will primary Republicans if they don't vote for the absolute, not just on abortion, on guns, on many social issues, if you do not tax issues, so many of these things, if you do not vote the, the farthest right position, you fear a challenge from the right. And that's what, again, I feel like is missing today in politics is a lot of people just want somebody in the center to say, we want government to work. We want people to solve problems. We want people to walk across, work across party lines. But there's nothing causing that. There, there's nothing organized to make that voice heard. And we're going to change that. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, we appreciate you taking time out to come speak to us tonight. Arkansas State Senator Jim Hendren, thank you so much. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.